Welcome to my basic clan guide. In this guide, I'm going to be talking about how to make clan uh, usable. Um, that's really the key here because honestly, like the game hands you better units and he is one of those units that just gets overshadowed by better things that the game gives you for free. Um, is he viable? To some degree, he, you kind of have to overinvest in him to make him viable, but he's not necessarily a bad unit. I think it's just one of those things where you keep getting better units that you can run him if you want to, but there's really no reason to do so. There's no advantage of running him over someone else. Uh, generally speaking, uh, other mages you should run instead of him are Citrine, uh, Saline, Anna on Mage, uh, Jean on Mage, like Fram on Mage. Like even Fram is a better mage and she's actually more reasonable to run because she levels herself up from healing the entire time. Whereas he struggles to secure kills and deal relevant damage. Now he does deal decent damage against armor and enemies with low res as a mage should, but his growth rates on mage aren't really the best. Uh, but let's still talk about how to build this unit to make him relevant. It is, so it is difficult to level him up. This is going to be a problem. So in order to mitigate this problem, you're either going to need to feed him more kills than normal, like more kills than most units would get to get him excess experience to push him up into level 10, or you're going to need to hand him Micaiah so that he can heal, so that he can be a healer to power level through healing. Uh, you can use an exploit if you want, where you leave an enemy alive on maps where you have control over when you fight bosses or when you beat the map and just have him keep healing things to power level. That's probably the best use case for him. So Micaiah plus some kind of XP farm. Now I personally don't use XP farms outside of setting Anna up. If I decide to run Anna, just to quickly get her to level nine on John's paralog. But if you want to use clan, you'd probably want to do something similar. Now, is it worth doing this for him specifically? Uh, in my opinion, no, but let's say you want to do that. You want to run him, maybe you like him as a character. Uh, so I would highly recommend putting Micaiah on him, handing him a bunch of healing staves and just having him heal dudes. And he will level up enough, and then once you get him to level 10, you can second seal him, or I'm sorry, you can master seal him into Sage or Mage Knight. And you can always second seal him onto physical. So his growth rates, he has 40% health, 35% strength, 10% magic, which is one of the lowest magic growth rates. Uh, there's also magic growth rate modifier from the classes, but his personal growth rate on magic is very low. He does have 40 dex and 50% speed, 30 defense, 30% uh, defense, 25% res, 20% luck, 5% build. So he has a little bit of build, but he mostly wants to be, like in the beginning at least, on magic classes because it's hard to get second seals until you start entering the mid game. Uh, but he definitely would be better on a physical class because of his 35% strength growth. So his best long-term solution or long-term strategy is a physical build. So he's basically like Anna where he's on the wrong thing, except honestly, Anna isn't even that bad on physical for the few chapters you use her on physical. Uh, but he, like on mage, he's okay. So it's kind of similar in that way, but she has way better growths than him overall. So if you're going to overinvest in one of these like pupil type units, I would say you should invest in Anna or Jean because both of them end up becoming insane throughout a maddening run. Um, okay, so those are his growths, the pros and cons of using him. There's really no pro to using him. It's ba He's basically just worse than other units. I'm just being honest with you. I don't dislike him or anything. It's just if, if you're going to be running these units on maddening, you should know what you're getting yourself into. So by running him, you're actively making the game harder. So just be aware of that. Okay, so I've talked about level of investment. Let's talk about classes. So let's go to inventory. I was actually already on it. <laughs> All right, clan, change class. Okay, so what classes does he want to go on? So his speed is good and his strength growth is good. So theoretically, he could be good on anything. I would put him on Wyvern because that would give him 55% strength growth. So if we go down to Wyvern, so you'd have to second seal him into this and also get the proficiencies on it. Uh, but he would make a decent Wyvern. So... You know, here's Wyvern. You could run... So with his low build, the other thing too is his build isn't very high. Some characters have higher build than others. 
Characters with higher build can wield heavier weapons and double more consistently with high speed. So even though he has high speed, uh, he will struggle to wield heavier weapons. So on Wyvern, you probably want to do a Sword Lance Wyvern, and you could use either or. Now he does have an innate proficiency in Tomes, which is unfortunate, so he can't really make use of that on this class. Now you can still put him on Sage, and his magic growth will be 40%, which is not terrible like it's viable like that's four points of magic per 10 level up so he at least would have some stats but you can see you know him getting into sage his magic stat is not very impressive it's not blowing me away so he's not going to be the best sage mage knight or wyvern the best thing for him is probably wyvern knight sword lance wyvern i wouldn't put him on axes he can't he can't deal with the weight it's going to slow him down too much and probably focus on the lances because you can get a steel lance down to like seven, like six to eight weight pretty reliably. So that would be like heavy hitting enough that he'd be relevant. And Wyvern is a fantastic class that also gives plus 5% speed growth. So that would put him at 55% speed, 55% strength, which is enough. And it also helps him fix his low health growth of 40%. Uh, Wyvern gives plus 20% health growth. So he would actually be reasonably okay now he wouldn't be the best wyvern but he would be viable and on sage he would be okay um he could heal mostly i would mostly use him to heal and then just like clean up armor like you know enemy armor that's at like half health or 75 percent health he could probably kill so i would just use him in that way but even even so there's way better sages anna is a way anna gets 80 percent magic growth on sage she's going to destroy this kid in terms of raw stats, uh, putting him on Griffin Knight, I think, would be a mistake. He wants more strength growth. Griffin Knight just gives 10%. He could run Griffin Knight, and he would be pretty fast. He would be 70% speed growth, 45% strength growth, which is respectable. So putting him on Lance Griffin Knight could be viable. Now, the problem with Griffin Knight on units with low strength is that they tend to deal poor damage. So Griffin Knight is usually to fix speed on units that have bad speed but high strength, and Wyvern is usually used to fix units who have bad strength but good speed. So he could be okay on Griffin, but I'd say Wyvern is the better option for him. Wolf Knight, I don't think you should put him on. It has poor modifiers for him. Um, I believe it's like 5% strength. Or no, it's, yeah, f plus 5% strength on Wolf Knight. So that would put him at 40%, which it's not horrible. But his low strength, like if you put a high strength unit on Wolf Knight, Wolf Knight gives you plus 20% speed growth. So even if you have like 30% speed growth, Wolf Knight will make you fast enough that you can take advantage of your high strength. And if you can get to high enough speed with daggers on a high strength unit, and you can double with daggers, you're a huge threat. Like daggers are legit with high strength. You just need to fix a unit speed. Paladin, I don't know that I would recommend Paladin. You could use it. It's not the worst thing for him. It does give him 15% speed and strength. So he would be at 50% strength and 65% speed. So he could run Paladin. That is that is probably another viable option now that I think about it. Wolf Knight, I wouldn't because of the strength, but Paladin, Paladin and Wyvern might be his best classes. I think some people have mentioned putting him on Warrior. A Warrior would be fine. You get the longbow, backup attacks, you get the plus 25% strength growth, so that makes his strength pretty high. Warrior also is overall a decent class. However, the the, the problem with Warrior is the build. So like let's go to let's go to Warrior. So he would be an eight build as an axe user. That's that's on the lower end. If the intention is to double with Warrior, I don't know that he's going to be doubling very consistently on this class. It is true, Warrior gets 15% speed, so he'd be 65% speed growth, which is good. And he would be 10% build growth. So every 10 levels, he would get one point of build to start offset his poor build. Berserker actually might be better just because it increases his build. There is a speed difference though, but Berserker increases the build growth by 10%, so 15%. So every 20 levels, you get three points of build or 1.5 per 10. Uh, that would be, that would help him long-term. Obviously the speed growth on warrior there's just five percent difference between the two 
but you have plus two base speed, or I'm sorry, plus one, which kind of is the same as having extra build. Um, yeah, I, like these are viable, I would say. As for like stuff like Archer, Sniper, Bow Knights, I would avoid it. I don't see the upside. The upside. Dude, some, some people are like really getting really triggered by me using the term upside like maybe a few times in a video. Like, I don't know. It's funny. All right. Halberdier. Now, Halberdier fixes most units. You can put anything on Halberdier and it'll be good. You can have terrible strength and terrible speed. And if you just hand a dude some like silver weapon plus three, it doesn't matter what their speed is because it just doubles anyways. So you can use Halberdier to fix bad units pretty consistently. Hero is also always an option. Just like shift their damage into brave assist so you know even if you're a terrible unit you can still contribute a lot of people swear by this tactic i used it on my first run to some degree it was fun it's viable uh sword master i wouldn't put him on mostly because of the low strength it, it would make him insanely fast but the low strength in the low strength growth sword master just gives you plus 10 percent strength he wants some kind of strength fixing if you want to make him relevant, if you want to take advantage of his speed. Thief is an interesting option for him. It does give him plus 10% strength and some speed as well, but kind of similar to Wolf Knight, I would say his low strength would be a problem to overcome, and the game hands you two thieves who are already really strong. Uh, Yunaka and Zelkov are both legit units that don't really have downsides. Aside from dealing with armor, I guess they do have a downside. <laughs> they can't really deal damage to armored units. But aside from that, they can kill a lot of things and avoid tank, which is very strong. Okay, so best early passives for the unit. So let's go to this. Now, Cantor is always an option. However, early passives, you're going to have to put Sigurd on him immediately if you want to have him hit 1k sp and it's going to be difficult it's not going to be easy so if you want him to get early stuff that's good that's like 1k sp you're gonna have to put sigurd on him very early and then you know switch him over to like makaya or something or what's her face selica so just just so that he get, he gets good sp generation otherwise he's just not gonna he starts off i think with 300 sp so you need to get bond rings on him early you need to get uh, an emblem ring on him early so that he can get enough SP. So if you're going the magic route, Tome Precision isn't a bad option. It's cheap. You can get Tome Precision 2 for relatively cheap, and it's nice. Tome Precision 3 can be unlocked relatively easily. Holy Stance, I'm not a fan of. I don't think this is worth it. It is really cheap, though. I like when you weird things like this are really cheap. I think more... Things like this should be cheaper. I hate how expensive, like, magic plus two and magic... Like, why is magic plus three 3k SP? Like, magic plus two 1k, magic plus three... Can this be 2k? Like, e even that's too much, but... Damn. <laughs> like, how do you... <laughs> this You would get this, like, on the final chapter. <laughs> how do you even unlock that? All right. Cantor is good on any unit, so you can always run Cantor. Momentum, if you want to make him a flying unit, would be good, because then as he's flying around... Uh, you can build up, you know, you get six move on Wyvern. You hit a dude. If you move six tiles, you get plus six damage consistently. It's just constant extra damage, which is always useful, no matter what the unit or the difficulty. It's extra damage. Um, alternatively, there's Lance Power. So if he's doubling consistently, he can always deal plus four damage. But the thing with momentum is that if you're standing right next to an enemy, you can move up one and then... So say the enemy is on your right. You move up, you move right, you move right, and you move down. You've now triggered momentum plus four. You now deal plus four damage. So it's the same thing as doubling with Lance Power without the downside of avoid minus 10. Uh, obviously, with a Brave Weapon, uh, Lance Power is better than momentum, but those are late mid-game to end game. So I would say if you're going to be running momentum, you might as well also run Lance Power if you want to do like a Brave build. Or if you want to just go for like some heavy hitting build, you can just run Momentum and Canter. So just like get in, smack a thing, and get out. Uh, but you could run both, and both are strong, and they they both have pros and cons. Because if you're averaging if every turn, you hit for plus four even on enemies next to you. It's the same damage as Lance Power doubling, 
and it's more consistent because you don't have to double to get that damage. And also you can hit plus six damage consistently on flying units. And it's very nice. Honestly, it's very nice. Lance power two. Now this is where things change. So if you could, if you get Lance power one, like let's say you want to commit to Lance power two throughout a run, you can reasonably get Lance power two as you hit mid game and get this early. And then if you're going to be using a brave weapon, this thing is crazy. This is plus 16 damage on a brave weapon. It's also plus eight damage when doubling. So Lance power two does outshine momentum, but obviously it's 1000 more SP. So that would be, you know, if you're going to get Lance power anyways, you can just start with Lance power one. Uh, you can always go, you can always go the canter route. Momentum's also good. Uh, headlong rush is whatever. You can use this as a utility if you want, but I don't recommend it. All right. So leaf build can be nice early on to offset heavy weight, but if he's on lances and you put him on wyvern, it shouldn't be an issue. So none of these are really too useful for him. Uh, for Roy, it's interesting how, okay, that's magic plus two. Okay. I see. All right. So yeah, strength plus two. Okay. So it is the same cost, but yeah, strength plus one is 500 strength plus two. The, I mean, strength plus is fine. Um, Arguably, this is isn't this just better than this? What's the difference? Isn't that just better? <laughs> isn't that? Am I missing something? I think that's just better. <laughs> isn't strength plus two? Like, isn't isn't this both just plus two damage? Or is attack calculated after uh, damage mitigation so that it penetrates armor? Isn't that just better? Now, the only the only way this isn't better is scaling, right? So if I want to scale this, it's more expensive. However, if I just go strength plus two. That's plus two damage. So if I double, that's plus four damage. And then if I go Lance Power, now I'm plus four damage for 2k SP. Um, with, I mean, it's the same downside. So I guess it's like the exact same way of achieving the same stats. Because Strength plus three is clearly not worth it. It's just strange. I think the scaling on these is weird because isn't this better than, like, isn't Strength plus two just better than Sword Power one? And you can get this early. So like you get this and then you get this and it's like the same thing as having sword power too. Except that you can get this early without a downside. And then when you want to scale up your damage more, then you can accept the avoid minus 10 penalty. Um, so that's, yeah, I guess strength plus two isn't a bad thing to get. Holdout is nice, but it's 2k SP, so good luck. Uh, sword power, I don't think you should use swords. Uh, for staves... You can use Staff Master if you want to put him on Griffin Knight or something. I think that would be fine. And he can just be like a healer that sometimes attacks things. You can use him as like a utility. That would be fine. Uh, avoid tanking on him. Now fast units make good avoid tankers. So avoid plus 10 on a Griffin Knight with staves could be decent. So then he's like dodgy and then he'd contribute to damage occasionally. And then mostly just be like a flying healer. That would be fine for him as well. Because uh, he does have the decent strength growth. And on Griffin, he would be at 45% strength growth, which is still enough to be relevant over time and to deal damage to like lower defense enemies like archers, uh, mages, things like this. Uh, so overall, you can run him. He's, a, he's an okay unit. He just requires a ton of investment. If he didn't require as much investment, I would say he's much better. I think he just has an unfortunate problem of being in a metagame where better things are just always being handed to you and if it weren't for that if it was easier to level him up i would say he's much better but unfortunately it's very difficult like you have to really go out of your way to level him up uh, but that's pretty much oh yeah that's not pretty much it for this one we have to go over engravings and weapons briefly so for emblem rings there's only like so many emblem rings early on so this is an early game guide for these units emblem rings if he's on a magic class give him a magic emblem ring you know, or a bond ring that increases magic damage because he's going to be stuck on mage for a while. Uh, Micaiah helps him level up. Selico will increase his damage. Uh, Sigurd will also increase his damage and give him canter if you want him to, like, get momentum damage. Uh, once you get the bond level up, you could do that. But I would say Selica or Micaiah for emblem rings. All right, and then for crafting... So if he's going to be on lances on Wyvern, you're going to want to give him a Steel Lance plus three with either one of these engravings. Uh, one scales the damage and reduces the weight. The other one just reduces the weight and also makes you basically immune to crits. Both are totally fine. This one also increases a void. 
It's a Sigurd engraving and then the Salica engraving, I believe. They're both pretty good on steel lances, so you can't go wrong with those. Uh, for tomes, I don't really recommend upgrading the early tomes at all. They're usually good enough to one round enemy armor without being upgraded, and the game hands you L fire as you enter the mid game. So you start getting like L thunder, L fire, L surge, L wind, stuff like that. So I don't recommend upgrading tomes if he's on uh, tomes. Um, and if you put him on swords, steel sword plus three is pretty solid. Um, I don't know that he could be a good leaven sword user because his magic growth isn't there. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. I'll be here. This unit does require a lot of investment, so I'm letting you know ahead of time. If this is your first maddening run and you're just watching the guides just to get an understanding, this is probably not a unit you should invest in. <laughs> All right. Thanks for checking this out. Peace.